Well, my name is Gabriel Matzkin. I'm the director of the Van Leer Jerusalem Institute. I'm your host. And my job is to open conferences. <laughs> I do this all week long, and it's always I find something to say, and this is the case here, too. So first of all, I would like to greet our distinguished guests, Miguel Dalmeide Zosa, the um, uh, ambassador of Portugal, and Susana Gunhun, this Hasenson, the ambassador of El Salvador, is very pleased, ple great pleasure to have you with us. And I welcome all of you here. Some of you I have not seen before, and that's always a good sign. Now, I have a couple of things to say about the topic, and you'll forgive the efforts of a tyro. If I look at the converso phenomenon, the exile, first from Spain and then from Portugal, in a political context, the first thing that occurs is the fall of Constantinople in 1453. And the reason is that this, in a way, made it obvious that there was a line of confrontation running along the Mediterranean between Christianity and Islam, and the Jews were in the unfortunate position of being on both sides of this divide. Now, one thing that happened as a consequence of the fall of Constantinople is that a few Greek intellectuals made it to the West. I don't know if it was half a dozen or a dozen or 20, Bessarion and his people. It's a very small group, and the people in Italy were very pleased to, be, to find, see them because they were supposed to have brought Greek culture with them. Now, why is this important? It's important because the fall of Granada in 1492 brought a similar phenomenon, which is the exile of the Jews. However, the exile of the Jews was not a matter of six or 10 or 20. It was a matter of tens of thousands, you know better than I do, perhaps 30,000, perhaps more, who had to leave, perhaps a greater number. I'm sure you'll correct me on this. And in this phenomenon, what I see is one of the roots of what one could call modern cosmopolitanism. Because the people who left were often of a high level of education. And because of that, what you had in a, as a mass phenomenon, and I think perhaps for the first time, was the phenomenon of what we call the rootless intellectual or the rootless cosmopolitan. People who came from one country, spent time in Italy, went to the Ottoman Empire, and brought a portable identity with them to the different countries uh, in which they emerged. This is not to minimize the many people who were not, but I, as an intellectual historian, look at intellectual movements, and therefore I see in this moment of 1492, in this phenomenon, uh, a great movement. Now, as you know, many, if not most, of the Jews converted, and that's why we have this conference on the conversos. But as you also know, their identity, both as conversos, as Jews, as Catholics, was never secure in the first 150 or 200 years of their existence. And they always had to navigate between multiple identities. And to my mind, this is one of the most important stories, because in the end, these people won, because we're all today, in a way, rootless cosmopolitans. And that is, I think, a phenomenon of great importance for the emergence of modernity. And so I look forward to this conference with great pleasure. I think that you are investigating what, not a side phenomenon, but one of the most important phenomena of the emergence of our world. And without further ado, I would like to call for greetings upon His Excellency, the Ambassador of Portugal, Miguel de Almeida Zosa. Please. Thank you, Professor. First of all, I sincere apologize for arriving late, but as you know, the traffic in Jerusalem is as unpredictable as anything else, so I arrived with sometimes hoping to arrive too early. I arrived too late. I'm sorry. Professor Gabriel Motzkin, Director of the Van Leer Jerusalem Institute, Professor Shifra Baruchsan Arbib, Dean of the Faculty of Humanities of Bar Ilan University, 
Professor Cyril Aslanov, head of the Mediterranean unit of the Van Lier, uh, Jeru uh, Jerusalem Institute. Professor Ilda Nisimi, chair of the Department of General uh, History of the Berlin University. My dear friend, the ambassador of Salvador and uh, distinguished professors, distinguished guests. As Ambassador of Portugal to the State of Israel, I am honored and delighted to participate to this international workshop on the political dimensions of the Converso phenomenon in Portugal and beyond, which reunites here in Israel distinguished experts on Converso history and culture. I would like thus to congratulate and express my appreciation and gratitude to the Van Leer Jerusalem Institute, to the University of Barilan, the Journal of Levantine Studies, and the, the Israel Science Foundation for this timely initiative, to which the Institute Camões and the Embassy gladly associated to. Allow me a special and warm welcome to the Portuguese scholars that are here today to participate in this workshop. Needless to say, the Converse phenomenon is an issue of the utmost interest and importance to the history of my country. And research on its different dimensions is essential for it enlightens us on the lives, itineraries and contributions of this very specific group of Portuguese. Both in Portugal and throughout the world, they have played an important role that transcends our national history their contribution being a major driving force of the future developments on world trade, finance, science, literature, arts, and civilization in general. History is a discipline that, through the research and analysis of our past, can help us to build a better future. One of the good lessons I have received from my parents is that we cannot change the past, but we can, in fact we must, draw lessons from it in order to build a better future, avoiding a repetition of past mistakes or lost opportunities. A French statesman came later on to reinforce this rule when he stated that one that does not know where he comes from does not know where he goes, for he doesn't know where he is. I agree. For many years, conversal phenomenon was in my country an embarrassing issue, for it was wrongly believed that this particular moment of our history should be kept on a discrete mode, for it could tarnish the, memory, the memories of our golden age, the discoveries. We know, knew that existed, for it was referred on our history books and lessons, but in a very soft way, with very little information about individual people that were referred to as the Christianos, the new Christians. Recent, in the last decades, this feeling started to change, and today, with the help of historians and researchers, many Portuguese are rediscovering this part of their past, of their roots and culture, and they are keen to know more about it. Arriving in Israel three years ago, I also felt the need to know more about the history of the Jews, to learn more about the relations between the nation and my country, about the Moranos, their history, and cultural importance. I was confronted with the seductive world that immediately captivated my interest and my attention. I got acquainted to the extraordinary lives of extraordinary people of the diaspora, many of them born in Portugal, like the remarkable adventurous Dona Gracia Nazi and her nephew, Joseph Nazi, João Rodrigues de Castelo Branco, the Amatos Lusitanos, one of the great names of the history of medicine, Judá Bravanel, Leo de Ebru, born in Lisbon and author of a masterpiece of Renaissance poetry, The Dialogues of Love, Samuel Wiske and his Consolation, Consolação para as Tribulações de Israel, a Jewish classic, that was originally written in Portuguese, Abraham Zacuto, astronomer and cosmographer and author of the celebrated Almanac Perpetuum, the incophemist Baruch Spinoza, the visionary Rabbi, Rabbi Menasseh Ben Israel, born in Madeira, 
to become later the leader of the Portuguese nation in Amsterdam and the man that fought to obtain the return of the Jews to the Cromwell in England. Many more people deserve to be mentioned, but that will take too long. I just hope that one day their lives and their achievements will be better known in Portugal and worldwide, for they also have a, problem, uh, a place in our history. Taking all this to into account, I would like to formulate here two personal wishes to our hosts and to the participants on this workshop. First, that the different contributions presented in this workshop may become available to everyone, for I'm sure that they will reveal many aspects of the Murano phenomenon that are not yet known in my country. Secondly, that this workshop will represent only the starting of a more intense exchange between scholars and researchers on this chapter of Jewish history that Portugal and Israel share. I hope that the next workshop can be organized in Portugal and that afterwards these kind of meetings may take place regularly in Portugal, in Israel or in any other places where the Muranos found a safe haven and bloomed. This kind of wise gatherings by showing how important Jewish culture, culture was to the formation of several national cultures has also a positive role to play on the fight on intolerance and anti-Semitism, which most of the times derives mainly from sheer ignorance. So this is also a weapon to cultivate respect, mutual respect. I would like to finish formulating my best wishes of success to this important event that I know will help also to reinforce the relations between Israel and Portugal. Thank you. I call on Professor Cyril Aslanov, the head of the Mediterranean unit, to deliver his words of greeting. Good morning. In order to thank the Embassy of Portugal and the Instituto Camões for supporting this uh, very interesting event, I would like to switch to Portuguese, with your permission. Uh, então, <laughs> é, não quero falar muito porque o tempo está correndo, mas uh, uma coisa que uh, é muito importante sublinhar uh, nesta introdução é que parece incom, uh, incompatível falar da dimensão dos cristãos novos portugueses, uh, das, das dimensões políticas dos, uh, do fenômeno dos conversos, é, no limite do, espa, uh, do espaço mediterrâneo. Uh, o Portugal não é um país mediterrâneo. Então, preciso explicar a razão da possibilidade de colocar um evento deste jeito uh, no âmbito da, do espaço mediterrâneo. A primeira coisa é que, precisamente, é, mediante os cristãos novos é, voltados à prática do judaísmo, a identidade judaica portuguesa se reconectou como espaço mediterrâneo e quero é, mencionar a cidade de Livorno. Livorno que é um centro importantíssimo do comércio mediterrâneo é que foi fundada é, em, em parte graças a, é, a, a o arrivo dos, a, juda, dos judeus portugueses a, refugiados do Portugal por a, fugir à intolerância e à inquisição. É, outra a, esta diáspora livornesa a, teve uma continuação até Alepo, até Alepo, que faz parte, obviamente, da rede, da rede do comércio mediterrâneo. Isso, essa porosidade entre o espaço atlântico português e o espaço eh, mediterrâneo, não necessariamente português, mas que tornou-se português graças aos judeus portugueses, eh, revela a porosidade das fronteiras, que se manifesta não só 
entre o espaço atlântico e o espaço mediterrâneo, mas também uh, através da gradual transição entre cristão novo fica, fica, uh, que fica no Portugal, que ficava no Portugal, é cristão novo uh, tornando-se em judeus novos, como uh, o professor Kaplan uh, explicou em uh, uh, seu livro intitulado em modo provocativo, mas estimulante, os judeus novos de Amsterdã. Então, eh, acho que é a função de uma conferência científica, de um simpósio, de elucidar o que não está eh, bastante claro, precisamente devido à porosidade das fronteiras, porosidade, eh, entre outras coisas, entre as identidades. Há uma porosidade, há uma eh, zona de Uh, de, direi cinza, uma zona cinza entre as identidades e precisamente este simpósio uh, vai elucidar as zonas cinzas para uh, entender melhor esta etapa fundamental do uh, desenvolvimento da uh, Europa uh, nos uh, tempos modernos, na, na idade moderna. Agradeço pela atenção.
I call on Professor Cyril Aslanov, the head of the Mediterranean Unit, to deliver his words of greeting. Good morning. In order to thank the Embassy of Portugal and the Instituto Camões for supporting this uh, very interesting event, I would like to switch to Portuguese, with your permission. Uh, então, é, não quero falar muito porque o tempo está correndo, mas é, uma coisa que é, é muito importante sublinhar é, nesta introdução é que parece incom, é, incompatível falar da dimensão dos cristãos novos portugueses, é, das, das dimensões políticas dos é, do fenômeno dos conversos, é, no limite do, espa uh, do espaço mediterrâneo. Uh, o Portugal não é um país mediterrâneo. Então, preciso explicar a razão da possibilidade de colocar um evento deste jeito uh, no âmbito da, do espaço mediterrâneo. A primeira coisa é que, precisamente, uh, mediante os cristãos novos uh, voltados à prática do ju judaísmo, a identidade judaica portuguesa se reconectou como espaço mediterrâneo e quero é, mencionar a cidade de Livorno. Livorno que é um centro importantíssimo do comércio mediterrâneo e que foi fundada é, em em parte, graças a, é, a, a, o arrivo dos, uh, juda, dos judeus portugueses uh, refugiados do Portugal por uh, fugir à intolerância e à Inquisição. Uh, outra, uh, esta diáspora livornese uh, teve uma continuação até Alepo, até Alepo, que faz parte, obviamente, da rede, da rede do comércio mediterrâneo. Isso, essa porosidade entre o espaço atlântico português e o espaço eh, mediterrâneo, não necessariamente português, mas que se tornou ser português graças aos judeus portugueses, eh, revela a porosidade das fronteiras, porosidade que se manifesta não só entre o espaço atlântico e o espaço mediterrâneo, mas também uh, através da gradual transição entre cristão novo fi, fi, uh, que fica no Portugal, que ficava no Portugal, e cristão novo uh, tornando-se em judeus novos, como uh, o professor Kaplan uh, explicou em uh, uh, seu livro intitulado, em modo provocativo, mas estimulante, os judeus novos de Amsterdã. Então, é, acho que é a função de uma conferência científica, de um simpósio, de elucidar o que não está é, bastante claro, precisamente devido à porosidade das fronteiras, porosidade, é, entre outras coisas, entre as identidades. Há uma porosidade, há uma eh, zona de, uh, de, direi, cinza, uma zona cinza entre as identidades e, precisamente, este simpósio eh, vai elucidar as zonas cinzas para eh, entender melhor esta etapa fundamental do eh, desenvolvimento da eh, Europa nos tempos modernos, na idade moderna. Agradeço pela atenção.